to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. Peace, 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 family. Hey, you're now tuned in to another edition of the Narrative Podcast. The Narrative Podcast is the home of original people. Original people peace, original people reciprocity, and original people positivity. And there the podcast promotes positive reinforcement of original people and original people culture. And there the podcast provides positive frames of reference about original people and original people culture. Welcome to the Near the Podcast, and I am your host, Hall Ziali. Welcome all my narrators. <clears throat> so, pardon me. How is everybody doing this evening on this sensational Saturday? Well, I hope. Yeah. So the weekend has now hit upon us. You know, everybody's probably like. You know, probably headed out to the club right about now as I'm recording this or getting ready to have evening plans on this Saturday. But, um, yeah, welcome to another edition of the Narrative Podcast. A uh, whole lot of stuff going on in the world today. Got some stuff for you, some things to uh, talk about today. And, um, it's going to be a pretty nice show, but before I get into that, I just got to say, the internet be internet. Y'all are crazy. Oh, man. That, uh, I, <laughs> what is it? The uh, Australian breakdancing, like, yeah, like every single skit. And meme that I've seen about it just been having me dying in tears. Oh my God, y'all are crazy. <laughs> y'all are absolutely nuts. Like every single last one of them was spot on though. <laughs> oh wow, man. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I can hardly contain myself with that, but like the internet be internet sometimes. But um, anyway, welcome to this edition of the Narrative Podcast. Um, so how I usually start this thing off is um, I give a, a brief synopsis of the Narrative Podcast to the new listeners unfamiliar with me and my platform before diving into the content. So let's start at the top, Tippy, the name, the narrative podcast. I named my podcast the narrative podcast because I don't like the false narrative that the media weaves about original people and original people culture. Hence the title, the narrative podcast. My objective on here is to, you know, change the narrative about how our people are perceived um, in the media and um, outside of our culture due to the media's uh, misrep intentional misrepresentation, misrepresentation of our people and our culture. So that's why, you know, I designed this platform. And um, my mission statement basically is to um, bring awareness to the listening audience as well as encourage the listening audience to um, responsibly utilize their uh, platforms to um, accurately portray our images. And by our images, I mean original people, images and likenesses you know, in a positive light 
on, you know, whatever platform that they occupy. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's a good segue for my tagline, the narrative podcast, changing the narrative one episode at a time by destroying negative stereotypes about original people and original people culture. How do I destroy the negative stereotypes about our people and our culture? By providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. Hence the title, The Narrative Podcast. And that's entirely what The Narrative Podcast is all about. <clears throat> I'm here to provide positive frames of reference about original people and original people culture. So, um, yeah. So the next thing you need to be aware when listening to my uh, podcast is that I refer to my content, or, uh, well, yeah, I guess my uh, target listening audience is my content creators, but I refer to my target listening audience as my narrators. And the purpose of me doing that is just really um, me acknowledging the times that we're living in. Um, we're living in a digital information age. Everybody has some type of um, digital platform that they occupy. We gather information online. We network, socialize, and interact online in um, all these different mediums in which to uh, interact or, you know, gather information or 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 uh, network and socialize or. Um, sell things if you're you, you own your own business then to sell product we do all this digitally now and um, every single digital platform every single page online page has um, a bio section and in the bio section if, if you know you're a person not a business for people just, you know, socializing or, you know, interacting or gathering information online, you go to the bio section and you get a, a, a sense of, you know, who this person is. Or if you're a business, you know, what this business is and, you know, what they're about by reading their bio section. And then um, after you read the bio section, you will notice the content that they upload is kind of, you know, um, accentuates and plays off their bio section, meaning like the content that they upload is kind of, you know, um, an accompaniment to their bio. There's their about section, you know, just like um, examples of, you know, their hobbies and their interests and what they're into, their turn-offs, their turn-offs, their, uh, you know, it just kind of uh, accentuates the bio section, meaning, you know, it helps them um, present the best possible version of themselves, or if it's a business, the best possible version of their product. Uh, but essentially what I'm saying, said all there to say, when people, you know, do anything online, they uh, share the be best possible version of themselves, or if they're a business, you know, they share the best possible version of their product. Uh, essentially everybody's telling or narrating their own story and they're telling or narrating their own stories from the best possible perspective as possible so like nobody gets online and um, there's, is, there's an exception to the rule some people do it but generally most people you know when they get online they share the best possible versions of themselves. Like, if they're into athletic um, activity, 
you're always, you know, uploading, you know, photos and, you know, things to, you know, play up their hobbies and their interests or their, uh, their sports, um, interests, like, you know, games, they're at the game or they're playing the game. You know, we just came from a whatever game or, you know, they're um, uploading content to uh, reflect that. Um, if you're a gym rat, you know, you're up constantly uploading content that reflects, you know, fitness, um, routine, fit, a fitness lifestyle. You know, you're, you're uh, working out, you're eating healthy going to the gym, you're like in the gym or, you know, you're uploading content of famous people that are in shape and, you know, what have you, or say you're like, maybe you're a foodie, so you're maybe like uploading content, you know, doing reviews, if you do reviews or your favorite commentators that do reviews or Longer story short, everybody's um, sharing the best possible version of themselves. They're getting online, if they're into having fun, you know, they're always sharing pictures of their friends, having fun, doing fun stuff, doing cool stuff. Uh, if they're into the air quotes, finer things in life, they're showing photographs that reflect the finer things in life. Um, you know, jet setting, you know, private jets, uh, five-star hotels and restaurants, things of that nature. So everybody shares the best possible versions of themselves. Now, some people exaggerate the best possible versions of themselves. This new generation of hip-hop, they call that capping, but, you know, there's an even older saying than that, Sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. <laughs> so, but anyway, I digress. So my point being why I refer to my target listening audience as my narrators, everybody uh, tells or narrates their own stories. And if history hasn't taught us anything, is taught us this, if you don't tell your own story, your own story will be told for you. And the story that's being told about our people by the media and people outside of our culture that don't understand us as a people and don't understand our culture is a negative uh, story. It's a degenerate story. It's a violent story. Uh, it's a downtrodden, disenfranchised, ignorant story. So we got to put it back into pers into perspective as narrators by telling the true story of who we are as a people, which is kings and queens, gods and goddesses of the universe. And we need to, you know, always be um, depicted as such. And the best way to do that, you know, is do it on your own platform. As we can't control, you know, how other people perceive us, how they react to us and respond to us and interact with us, but we can control the type of content that we are putting out. So we, and the last thing we need to do as a people is play up into these negative stereotypes and stigmas that the media places over our people intentionally I might add and they intentionally do this as a form of psychological programming and conditioning you know it's basically psychological warfare fear at its finest when they do that uh, I get into why they do that a little bit later but uh, yeah that's essentially why I refer to our people you know my target listening audience as, um, you know, my narrators. 
Next thing you need to know about the Narrative Podcast is the Narrative Podcast is a safe space. It's a, a positive space for original people, meaning I don't entertain nonsense. I don't entertain the uh, gossip and slander and name calling, uh, degeneracy, and none of the uh, foolishness about our people and our culture. I don't add on to it. I don't um, play up beefs. I don't take sides when you know people within our culture are at odds with one another. I don't promote that on this platform. I, what I do on this platform is I use it to uplift and edify, you know, my people with positive frames of reference about my people and my culture. So. You know, no funny business, no name calling, no slander, no he say, she say, and all that. You know, I just keep it po- super, super duper positive and, um, you know, try to promote the positivity. You know, I don't keep it generic and fake. You know, there's some people that are just not likable. We got some, you know, we got some, we got some a-holes in our community. But I'm not going to dedicate my platform into airing them out. I'm not going to even give any signs of, you know, these, you know, people within my culture that just are put there to cause havoc, chaos, and confusion. They always got the opposing view. You know, I'm not going to put out no signs that they're living rent-free in my head. And I encourage my listening audience to, you know, take up that, the same thing, my philosophy, too. You know, we shouldn't be, you know, giving them airtime and um, giving them our attention when we already know what they're there for. So, you know, why call a plant a plant? But um, anyway, like I said, this is a positive space. I don't do any name calling. I don't do denigrating. I don't promote that. Uh, I'm just here to uplift and edify my people with facts and uh, just um, praise us for all the things that we do right and um, congratulate our people that are progressing and leading the charge and, you know, doing the work and, um, you know, trying to encourage everybody to be the change. That's what the Narrative Podcast is all about. Uh, so having said that this is a platform of truth however if I do feel somebody in our community is intentionally you know using their platform to you know make us make a fool out of us then I will call said individual out but like I said it's no finger pointing and name calling and none of that typically on here Um, so the only way I will will, now what I do on my platform is I do uh, cover current events whether it's globally nationally or just something within our community you know I speak on that and um, when I do deliver my commentary it's basically just to you know cover whatever's going on in the world as it relates to us from our perspective because the media have us you know go out of their way to you know have us all looking and sounding super crazy so you know when I deliver my commentary um I basically frame it up in the perspective of the bigger picture perspective. 
especially as it relates to, you know, higher echelon within our community, um, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, entertainment industry. Um, so, like, it's not the clown uh, them or, you know, finger point or try to, you know, use their name to try to, like, garner some type of... of, of uh, monetary gain or clout chase or none of that it's just basically you know like I said I'm framing it up whatever negative is going on within I'm just framing it up from the perspective of the bigger picture and pretty much everything within our community that happens negative in a, in a negative way could be traced back to, you know, systemic oppression and psychological programming and conditioning. They psychologically program us and condition us with, you know, all this, you know, negative content. Uh, I believe it's called trauma conditioning. They're just exploiting everything our people that has gone everything that our people has gone through and they're just like intensifying it you know putting it in our face putting all the negative you know stuff in our face 24 hours a day seven days a week it's you know it's in television it's in movies it's in literature it's in magazines it's in advertisements you know, we can't escape it. You can't unsee it. You can't unhear it. You know, I mean, yes, you can always keep a positive mind state, but unless, like, you know, unless you plan on living in the rock, under a rock, or, um, you know, going off the grid, not being on the internet, or having a cellular device, or a tablet, or nothing like that. You know, which ain't nothing wrong going off the grid. There's a lot of people go off the grid and they just live a ha super happy life. They don't worry about anything. But um, unless you plan on going off the grid, you can't unsee all of this stuff. Like, as soon as you turn on your television, as soon as you pull out your device, like, you're just seeing um, negativity as far as our people is concerned, as far as where, you know, how we're being portrayed, our images and our likenesses are being portrayed. This is just, you know, like I said, it's psychological programming at its best. And that's how, you know, I usually frame it up about, you know, anybody within our community that's involved in something negative or something negative is happening to them and they're the, uh, you know, they're the focus of the news. So that's how I usually frame up my commentary. So like I said, <clears throat> in closing, the Narrative Podcast um, is a super positive, safe space for original people. Um, and then next, um, it's a time-sensitive platform. I try not to exceed one hour per broadcast, and the purpose of me doing that is basically to um, keep my listening audience attentive because this is an all audio platform and the last thing I want to do is bore you guys to sleep um, and the quickest way to do that is just basically going on tangents and you know glorified rants not having any clear speaking points jumping from subject to subject and um, being monotonous and uh, redundant and um, so I try to keep everything fresh, exciting, um, stim intellectually stimulating and you know just trying to keep you guys attentive and paying you know attentive with the content and you know eager to want to uh, listen to the next episode. So I can't do that if I'm just droning on and on and on and not having a clear starting or stopping point or, you know, 
no good segues to the next topic. Like I said, talking in circles, that's the like quickest way to turn somebody off. So, you know, that's why I try to time each uh, episode. I try to time each section and um, I try not to exceed one hour per broadcast. So just keep it, just keep it popping, just keep it moving. I want to inform you and enter, enlighten you and entertain you, you know, all in one foul swoop. So that's why I um, try not to exceed one hour per broadcast. <clears throat> um, and then last but not least, so very important, I refer to my target listening audience as my narrators. Or excuse me. <laughs> I already said that, pardon me. Kind of a long day, guys. But, um, last but not least, I refer to our people as original people on my platform in reference to us. So I don't call us black or African American or Negro or none of that. And the reason why, um, Basically, for two reasons. One, it's historically accurate. And then two, to, you know, it's an effort to unite us as a people. So on the historical side of it, what I mean is, you know, we were, uh, we were and are the first beings on this planet. Um... We was here before every single body else. Not only was we here first, um, you know, we mothered and fathered civilization and there's not too much that we didn't discover. It's not too much that we didn't invent first or originally. It's not too much things that we didn't originate. Like pretty much everything in the world can be traced back to, you know, our existence, our original existence. That's why I refer to our people as original. And so I say this on every single episode, I'm going to tack on, you know, this factoid or rather dispel this false narrative it keeps on getting uh, replayed and replayed and replayed about our people, you, you know, history. The powers that shouldn't be, they want to, um, they want to try to make slavery the most poignant, uh, definitive time in our existence. When in reality, like I just said, we was here first. So being the first ones here, does it not stand to reason we existed everywhere, not just one place? See, in history, they want to try to make all of us come from Africa. And while we can all trace our lineage back to Africa, we didn't all come get to everywhere in the world that we're, we're residing in via slave boats. If we was here thousands of years before everybody, does it not, it not stand to reason that we inhabited all these different land masses originally? It was already there in pretty much every corner of the globe. There was a large concentration of our people existing and thriving every single place you can think of, especially here in the Americas. They want to keep on just perpetuating this, nonsens this nonsensical narrative that we just, you know, they kept going back to Africa for thousands of years collecting groups of us from Africa as slaves while slavery did in fact happen chattel slavery was real 
you know, they just fabricate a whole lot of slavery. You know, they fabricate the time frame, they fabricate the route, um, how they, you know, transported it, the slaves and all that. It's all a big fabrication. It's all a, just one big jumbled up lie. It's up to each and every one of us to unravel the lie with the truth. But, you know, I don't want to get too long-winded. I just, it really irks me that they keep on just perpetuating that false narrative that every single last one of us um, descended from slavery when the, the fact of the matter was that we was already indigenously located in every single part of the world you can think of. Like, who was already there, <laughs> existing, thriving. Uh, it doesn't even make sense when you really sit down and think about it. Like, does it not make more sense, you know, scientifically, economically, that the colonizers would, rather than go all the way to Africa from, you know, Europe and Spain, so that's primarily where the uh, slave trade, the slavers, were from was from like parts of Europe and parts of Spain, right? Go all the way to Africa to go get slaves, or since they was travelers, does it not make more sense that they just enslaved the people that were originally inhabiting all the places that they touched down on? Does that don't that make more sense? But um, anyway, yeah, I refer to our people, that's why I refer to our people as original from the historical side of it. And then on the uh, unity side of it, like I said, we were and are the original people of this, you know, of this uh, world was here first before, you know, pretty much everybody. And being here first, like, we are the most diverse group um, here in the world. Like, there's so many different types of us, hailing from so many different land masses, speaking so many different languages, having so many different, you know, perspectives in life, you know, religious perspectives, um, spiritual perspectives, political perspectives, um, anything you can name to separate a people, we have that within our community. But in addition to our differences, we also have a lot of commonality. We have a whole lot of spoken bonds, unspoken bonds, pardon me, um, you know, we all possess high concentrations of carbon, a.k.a. melanin. We all have just an unspoken cultural bonds, like just we can, you know, communicate with each other without actually speaking. We just know certain stuff culturally, like as all other cultures do. Um, And then uh, we can all trace our lineage back to the original point of origin for all civilization. So that's what we have in common as a people. We're all original, and we all got the uh, original recipe. <laughs> <coughs> and I ain't talking about the herbs and spices, <laughs> though some of us do love them. But anyway, I digress. Uh, so now that you're caught up, 
with, you know, everything you need to know about the narrative podcast and want to dive right on into the content um, this evening, this weekend. Now, <clears throat> what you need to be aware of is I have two different format styles. I have a weekday format style and I have a weekend format style. So this is clearly the weekend format style. And on my uh, weekend format style, I, what I do is I, um, I break up the content in sections. Each section has a speaking point. I describe each section as I come to them. And, um, you know, we can just go from there. Now, this is a, a weekend edition. So I'm here, I exist in this platform to present positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. Now during the weekday, my first uh, section I start off with is uh, positive news articles. But being this is a weekend edition of the Narrative Podcast, um, the first positive uh, frame of reference I'm going to give you about our people and our culture is the uh, positive frame of reference about business ownership or being an entrepreneur. Uh, and the reason why I'm uh, giving these particular, I'm starting off with these particular frames of reference is because we don't have a lot of frames of reference about, you know, um, being business owners and doing for self. As a matter of fact, we're greatly um, discouraged by society not to be business owners and to do for self. In fact, we're actually told by the educational system in so many ways that we can't do for self and that we'll always be reliant on, you know, this system to take care of us. <clears throat> and so that's why I provide the positive frame of reference about business owners. Um, I call this section my highlight section. In this section, I'm highlighting original people that own and operate their own businesses. And the uh, selection uh, criteria that I use to select the people that I highlight in the highlight section fall, falls under the, these categories. Uh, so first and foremost, they're all original people. Um, they all, all own and operate their own businesses. They hire their own. They give back to the community. They're involved in some type of philanthropy. Uh, they either, you know, have their own nonprofit organization or they pay into one. Um, and in many cases, um, they're family owned and operated. So in that instance, the positive frame of reference that I'm giving the listening audience is, you know, when it's a family owned establishment, um, I'm giving you the positive uh, frame of reference of generational wealth. Um, next uh, cri uh, qualifying criteria is that they uh, align up with my uh, theme. Um, and my theme is, you know, nationally recognized holidays. Um, so having said that, I'm going to dive into the highlight section of the narrative podcast. But I think I did glaze over um, one more thing uh, in the, uh, my selection process. Uh, many of, you know, what I'm trying to do here is basically, you know, walk you through the, you know, the day in the life of a business owner. I'm trying to present the listening audience with facts about, you know, whatever business that I'm talking about, you know, like where the business owner grew up, you know, where the, you know, their educational background, um, in many cases, uh, 
the business owners that I highlight in the highlight section, they don't necessarily have any expertise in the uh, business that they started, no educational background or uh, training. They basically essentially just, you know, stepped out on faith. They want to do something um, and they just pursued their passion vigorously and they got it. You know, they acquired their own business and became successful at it. They didn't have adequate money to start. They didn't have a business plan. Um, you know, all the uh, things society says is required to be, air quotes and quotes, successful. Um, they found a way to just make it work. So, you know, that's why I'm doing the highlight section. Like I said, for my last qualifying factor, um, you know, the businesses that I highlight in the highlight section, um, they usually align up with my theme. And my current theme, my current running theme is nationally recognized holiday. So, being that it is, you know, all, the month of August, day 10, the nationally recognized holiday is so it's August the 10th and today's nationally recognized holiday is National Bowling Day so I'll be highlighting businesses original people owned and operated businesses that specialize in bowling so Duh, what, what companies specialize in bowling? Uh, obviously, I'll be highlighting original people owned and operated bowling alleys. So up first, the first business that I'm highlighting in the highlight section of the Narrative Podcast Weekend Edition So, <clears throat> it is nationally, national uh, bowling is August 10th, National Bowling Day. August the 10th marks National Bowling Day. So, the businesses I'll be highlighting today on this weekend edition of the narrative podcast is you know original people uh owned and operated bowling alleys pardon me if i'm repeating myself i just kind of lost my place in my notes but um the first uh bowling alley that i'll be highlighting on this weekend edition of the narrative podcast is a bowling alley that goes by the name of Mission Bowling Club Now this business started in established it has actually two dates and I'll explain why it has two established dates um, established in the years of 2012 2018 by a sister by the name of Molly Bradshaw um, and it has two established dates because um, in 2012 she had a business partner for the business but as of 2018 she became the sole owner of Mission Bowling Club, so it's hers. She had, you know, she had some help, and we all need help sometimes to do things. But um, the situation worked out where she can take, you know, sole ownership of the business. Um, so the. Uh, website for uh, Mission Bowling is 
Mission Bowling Club, pardon me, I've been just saying Mission Bowling is, uh, the, the whole title is Mission Bowling Club. Uh, so the website is missionbowlingclub.com and they are located in Fresno, California, or uh, San Francisco, pardon me, California at 3176. 17th Street, uh, Fresno, California, 9410, and the telephone number is 415-863-2698. The, uh, uh, Operating times is from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tuesday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Thursday and Friday, 3 p.m. to midnight, Saturday, 11 a.m. to 12 midnight, Sunday, 11 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, so her uh, story is like very convoluted. She lived in a whole lot of places in um, California. Uh, she traveled quite a bit. She was raised uh, or born in. Um, she lived in a whole different, whole lot of counties before finally um, settling upon. Uh, Fres or San Francisco. I don't know why I want to keep saying Fresno. What is it about Fresno? I don't know. It's like a little mental block. Yep, so she has a very uh, interesting dynamic background. Um, so like staying true to the title of this section, the highlight section, I'm only going to be giving you the highlights of her life, not her entire life story. But like I say, um, the uh, purpose of the highlight section is to walk you through the entrepreneur's journey, the entrepreneur's uh, journey that I'm highlighting. Um, so first and foremost, um, our sister, she was born in, uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, Ukiah, California, and then um, she later on went to uh, Medea County, Little River County, and then ultimately ended up in uh, Sacramento, Citrus Heights area. And then, um, you know, from there, uh, as she became an adult, uh, she spent a whole lot of time in the hospitality in industry, uh, specifically um, uh, restaurants and bars. And she did that for like uh, 10 to 15 years under her belt um, in college she earned a, a master's degree in public health so you know which would brought her back to the hospitality industry as those businesses you know that's like the quickest way to get hired so she needed that income to you know pay for her education so she was like busting tables and stuff through college while she was in college and then like after she graduated you know you still got the bill so obviously she didn't get a, a job in the healthcare she didn't become a healthcare professional she decided to go full steam in the hospitality industry so she pretty much worked her way up probably was like a waitress and uh, from a waitress, probably, uh, you know, did a little cooking, and then from there, probably um, 
became a, a kitchen manager, a GM, and then just uh, owner, co-owner. And so, and that's precisely what brought her, led her to, you know, become a, you know, owner or, or a co-owner of a bar, uh, bowling alley. So after years in the hospitality industry, uh, she became uh, business partners with someone who, whom she worked with, a colleague. You know, they put their money up. And uh, she was running her own uh, bar for a little bit. But then um, the opportunity came up. Somebody went to present her with an uh, opportunity, something new and exciting in that area of San Francisco that they was located. Um, you know, they would get a whole lot of regulars. They would come in and talk about, um, you know, whole lot of people from the Midwest that would vacation and, um, you know, um, San Francisco and, you know, it was just basically like banter to see, uh, you know, that the seed to start our business kind of just got planted with banter. People would come in and just rave about going bowling and, you know, just after years of hearing that the business, um, her business partner was like, you know, why don't we just, you know, open our own bowling alley? And then that's precisely what they did. Because, you know, most of their clientele would just rant on about, you know, bowling and their memories coming up, growing up in the Midwest. Um, bowling, you know, is something social. And it's crazy because, you know, bowling... They say baseball is the American pastime, but when you really think about it, like, bowling, for real, is the American pastime. Because there's so many, like, social references that we have to uh, bowling, like, the biggest cult classic films is, like, centered around bowling. Because what is that one movie... It's just like a, a cinematic legend, um, The Big Lebowski, you know, movies like that. Um, what is the other one with, a? Uh, uh, what is that guy, what's his name, um, freaking Woody Harrelson, he had a bowling movie, I can't think of the title now, but even when we was younger, like, in cartoons, bowling, uh, the Flintstones. He was like a he was like a pro bowler. So like, when you think about it, bowling is really the American pastime. But um, anyway, that's what prompted her to uh, start her own um, or go into business with her business partner to start. Mission Bowling Club. So, um, you know, they create an atmosphere, and that's what she brings to the table. Of you know, as a a, a bar owner is bringing that um, social socialization factor to it, because people go to bars to socialize. It's not all about the alcoholic drinks. It's just like. You know, being adult, having adult entertainment, you know, being around other adults and, you know, still having fun and socializing. And that's the um, environment that she, that, you know, brand brings to the uh, consumer. What sets them apart from other bowling alleys, the uh, social uh, factor of it. Um, so, yeah. That's why, that's how essentially uh, Mission Bowling was born. And then uh, sometime later, her business partner, um, you know, went to cut her losses and, you know, went to her and said, hey, I don't really want to do this no more. Uh, do you want to buy my half out? And um, she graciously accepted, became a sole business owner, and it's still thriving today. Um, 
it's a staple in Fresno, California. Uh, they got a world class uh, kitchen. It specializes in uh, their staple is like the Mission Burger. They st stand by that. They got uh, vegan and uh, vegetarian options as well. Uh, they got a covered patio and uh, indoor dining. They got brunch on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, you can rent out the facility, of course. Um, they have all kind of social gatherings and mix mixers for the community. Um, to uh, get the full scope of what they do, you can follow them on uh, Facebook, IG, and X. And the name of it is uh, Mission Bowling Club. To find out, you know, what type of uh, social events and social gatherings they do. Um, so, yeah, that was a, a super brief one this today. Um because usually, like, I like to walk walk you through it, like, where they went to school and what specific town they, you know, came up in and, you know. And believe me, y'all, I, I done listened to, like, eight, nine podcasts, read, like, seven articles and, like, virtually got none of that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I pretty much... You know, that's my uh, intention when I do the highlight section is walk you through um, an entrepreneur's journey and just to uh, kind of um, re 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 reinforce my point. We don't have a lot of positive frames of reference about business ownership because unfortunately they come to us, uh, the very few frames of reference that we do have about business ownership come to us in the form of uh, scripted reality television shows and all these scripted reality television shows these um, scripted reality uh, television show producers uh, you know depict the images and the likenesses of the uh, original people that they cast in them shows from the worst possible light they can possibly uh, do. They, you know, they catch them in ultra rare form. You know, they catch them belligerently, like drunk, or engaging in street narcotics, uh, fornicating on uh, camera, uh, fighting. You know, just carrying on like nobody attempted to try to raise them. The whole time, they are sophisticated entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, they got well-established brands. They got, like, a whole staff. They got 20 or 30, you know, different companies under their umbrella, under their uh, brand umbrella. They send in people's, uh, you know, orders, st staffs, um, children, to college, you know, from whatever they do, whatever they're on TV, you know, just from what they're doing, they're feeding families, they're doing for the community, they're doing for their families, but we don't see all that. All we see is the ratchetness, the fighting, and, you know, the ignorant, um, for lack of better words, nigga stuff. That's all we see on these scripted reality television shows. We don't see the ambition. We don't see the drive. We don't see the focus. We don't see the motivation. We don't see the giving back to the community. We just see what, what these uh, Hollywood producers want us to see, which is, you know, the toxicity, which is the degeneracy, which is the ignorance, which is the violence. It's all that sells. And that's all they want is the ratings. But um, anyway, got a little long-winded. Um, I just wanted wanted you to know why I do the highlight section. You know what I'm trying to accomplish when I'm, you know, doing the highlight section. But uh, 
Yep, that's her story in a nutshell. Um, I think I covered everything the bowling offer Ali offers. So, uh, you know, there's really nothing else to do but uh, give a warm narrative podcast round of applause for our sister that is the sole owner, that is now the sole owner of Mission Bowling Club in Fresno, California. San Francisco. Dang, why do I keep on saying Fresno? San Francisco, California. Pardon me. business that I will be highlighting in the highlight section of the narrative podcast um, is a bowling alley by the name of Skyway Bowl Sports Bar and Grill and that's located in Chicago, Illinois And it was established in uh, 09 by a brother by the name of Johnny Hill and his wife. Johnny is an ex-military vet. Um, It doesn't say, you know, what branch of the military um, he served under. But uh, he got his start off. You know, he worked his way up to the top um, at different uh, bowling alleys. And so when the opportunity came up, came up, you know, just like that sister that I just said, to be a sole owner of an establishment, he graciously accepted. And um, thus, Skyward, Skyway Sports Bar and Grill was born. Um, it's really kind of self-explanatory. He listed he lists his story on the website, which is skywaybowlchicago.com. Um, and if you have specific questions about it, you can go to info at skywaybowlchicago.com for a call. Seven seven three. Seven three forty five thirty three. Um, it's open on Mondays from twelve PM to ten PM, Tuesdays from three PM to ten PM, Wednesdays from three PM to ten PM, Thursdays from twelve PM to ten PM, Fridays five PM to ten PM with a note that says get there before five or you won't be admitted um, in Chicago so if you know you know and then uh, Saturday from 11 p.m. to 10 p.m. and then uh, They're closed on Sundays, and the physical address, um, they're located uh, in the 10th Ward in Chicago. Physical address is 9915 South Terrace, Chicago, Illinois. Um, Pardon me, folks. Zip at. Yeah, so the zip is six zero six one seven, and the address again is nine nine one five South Torrance, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and then a uh, whole time, I think I've been saying it wrong. Is uh, Sky, uh, Skyway Sports Bar. 
Skyway Bowl Sports Bar and Grill. The entire title, Skyway Bowl Sports Bar and Grill. I just been saying Skyway uh, Bar and Grill, but it's Skyway Sports Bar and Grill. Um, so, like I said, uh, his background was kind of brief and to the point as well. Um, he spent many years in the uh, industry, in the hospitality industry, you know, as a, um, you know, a bowling employee. It just said in the 90s, he started in the like, late 90s working at a, uh, you know, a bowling, bowling alley. And then um, he got the... Uh, opportunity present itself to get his own bowling alley in uh, t uh, 2009 so and it's been a Chicago staple ever since um, they do have food and drink as well that's what sets them apart from the other other bowling alley alleys is there uh their uh, food selections. Um, it's catered by Mr. G's Catering Company. Um, they got some really unique selections. Um, it's basic, it's like basic pub grub, you know, anything cooked on a uh, flat top grill, anything deep fried. Um, not the healthiest stuff. I don't see a lot of vegan options. Uh, you're probably going to get a side salad or a, a Caesar salad. Like, that's a, a grilled chicken salad, maybe. <laughs> you ain't, there ain't nothing healthy on that menu, Jack. But it looks delicious, though. If I ate meat, I would probably would be like, yum, yum. But they got ribs, rib tips wings, shrimp, uh, Chicago, if you know, you know, Dorito Taco Nachos, that's like a thing in Chicago, they sell them at the stores, Polishes, um, the bowling alley itself is kind of a community thing. They have like, you know, they host all kinds of events. Uh, they got all kinds of clubs that meet meet at the bowling alley weekly. They have bid they have bid whiz tournaments. Um, Chicago is the land of the steppers. They have uh, stepping competitions. You know, uh, you know like different step clubs go to that bowling alley to do the, uh, you know, step. Um, says they also specialize in, uh, you know, their uh, frozen drink ices, watermelon ices, cantaloupe, strawberry. I guess that's unique. I've never heard of that. Um, yeah, but uh, it has a whole um, wide array of anonymities to choose from. Um, you can uh, reserve a lane, you can reserve the entire, you know, bowling alley. Um, they have league tournaments. Uh, They have uh, specials, Thursday, $1.50, bowl day, bowl all day for a dollar fifty. per game, per person. That's a little confusing. I'm thinking like, like saying per person all day, $1.50 per person. They also uh, have live music featured there. 
on certain days. They have um, jazz musicians. So it seems like a really fun place. Um, you know, really community type vibes. Uh, you know, next time you're in Chicago, Illinois, check that out. And the name is, once again, Skyway Bowl Sports Bar and Grill, established by Johnny Hill. Let's put them together and give them a warm near the podcast round of applause. Usually when I do the highlight section, I have in, an upward from uh, at least three to six businesses that I highlight. I only did two this weekend because, like, those are the only two that stood out and the only two that actually that I can research. Like, everybody else, they were saying they was black-owned, but then you know, look on their page and look at them. I didn't see nobody black or, you know... It was just like, you know, they didn't have a list of the anonymities and just like call this number and ask and call that number and ask. They didn't have no clear pricing. So I don't want to send you guys to sketchy spots. But I do want to support the community, but I don't want to send my listening audience to sketchy spots. So that's why I didn't just do like about six, you know black owned bowling alleys and a few of them were closed after I went to the website so closed forever like but um anyway that'll do it for this section for the highlight section on this weekend edition of the narrative podcast and on to my next section this section is called the spotlight section. Now in this section what I'm doing is I'm spotlighting people within our community that do for our community. They um you know they give back in a positive way. Um they impact, uplift and um represent our community in a positive way. So, you know, this section is dedicated to people within our uh, com- community that impact our community in a positive way. So this best section is basically the section of, you know, all heroes don't wear capes. I'm giving a, a, someone who is a, a prominent figure in our community their roses for, uh, you know, doing the work. Um, and the purpose of this um, section of the narrative podcast uh, lives up to my, uh, you know, sex, uh, second um, mission statement, which is to uplift and edify my people, um, to give positive reinforcement to my people. So this, what this section is all about, is uh, normalizing positive reinforcement because we've been stigmatized we think you know we've been programmed and conditioned to believe you know giving somebody positive reinforcement is a a sign of weakness or you're trying to act like a clout chaser or a groupie just by you know giving credit where credit is due um, paying someone a compliment you know We've been programmed and conditioned not to do that anymore in our community. I also do this section just to uh, prove um, that you can post positive content online and still thrive because we've also been programmed and conditioned to, you know, believe we can't be successful online unless we're engaging in some type of negativity, some type of name calling you know, dragging each other through the mud, stabbing each other in the back online. Uh, It's been incentivized for our community to do that. 
Like they pay, literally pay people to do that to start, you know, keep up mess and keep up beef and conflict and have it started. It's like they're making literally a billion dollars a year, you know, off of our people fighting and feuding with each other online. And they sitting back laughing at us when we do it. So that's another reason why I do the spotlight section. It's just basically, you know, to, um, you know, normalize uh, saying something positive about your brother or sister online instead of something negative. You know, if you got something negative to say, you should just keep it to yourself. Um, you know, this, this is a space of truth as well. And I know we all, you know, our, our dear brother, um, Rodney King, when he passed, you know, he was quoted as saying, can't we all just get along? And the answer is, no, we can't. There's some people out there that just, in any community, all communities, they're just not likable and just not nice people. But however, what our people need to do, start doing, is do like all these other communities and keep a united front. Because you very rarely see um, fighting and feuding in the Asian community online. You rare, very rarely see fighting and feuding between the Italian community online and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all these other, you know, nationalities and ethnicities. You don't, you know, you don't see that too much online. They do do it. Like, let's not get it twisted. They do, you know, take jabs at each other online too. But, you know, because the powers that shouldn't be, they control the media and, you know, they publicize whenever we do something negative. They publish, they highly, you know, publicize any time we engage in something negative because it sells. It, you know, just being super honest, like we are the most interesting people on the planet. Like nobody cares if two white people are fighting. That's boring. Who cares? Johnny and Billy got in the fight. Who cares? Nobody cares. Hong Long and Ja U got in the fight. Nobody cares. Felipe and Pedro got in the fight. Nobody cares. Jamal and Malik, they scrappy. Oh, everybody's running outside. Everybody's running outside. But, um, yeah, that's why I try to uh, normalize you know, being normal, just, you know, having something nice to say about your brother and sister instead of something, you know, something flip and um, mean-spirited, you know. This is a space to uplift and edify our people and just, you know, salute somebody in the community doing something positive for the community. And um, that's what the Narrative Podcast is all about. That's what this section is especially about, the spotlight section. I'm spotlighting somebody that deserves the spotlight for all the good that they do. And in the past, I have reserved my spotlight for, you know, celebrities um, and public figures, but more, I'm trying to just... Um, more these days spotlight regular people because, um, you know, 
I don't want to fall into the negative stereotype of all we know how to do is um, entertain. So I don't want to be, you know, falling into that negative stereotype. Because, you know, when I first started doing it, I just used to spotlight athletes, uh, actors, actresses, and recording artists, and comedians, and uh, religious figures, and YouTubers, and TikTokers, and, you know, people like that but not just regular, normal people that do good in the community. So as of late, I've been trying to really focus on just regular people. But anyway, my last little thing, I want to uh, just point out very quickly before um, giving the spotlight away to the uh, person that I'm going to be focus on, focusing on this week. Um, not for nothing, I started the wave for Spotlight, because before I added the Spotlight section to my podcast, nobody, n n nobody was spotlighting anybody. So I'll say it again, before I added the Spotlight section to my podcast, the Narrative Podcast, nobody N -n nobody was spotlighting anybody. Now every time you go on YouTube, they will be spotlighting such and such and such and this such. And today on the spotlight, it's a, like, so it's a whole buzz phrase now. But it's cool though, because you know, that kind of makes me feel happy that I um, started the trend because the sentiment behind me doing that was to unify our people and to normalize, you know, you know, using positive reinforcement. So if I can start a trend of us, you know, behaving decent towards one another, using our platforms to uplift and edify each other instead of you know, name call and uh, trying to tear each other down, then I'm definitely all right with it. I'm 110% all right with it. Um, yeah, so the internet makes the world really small. Uh, so I know I'm being watched. There's a whole lot of really, really um, famous, established entertainers that listen to my content, and I know they listen to my content, because I know they know that I know that they know that they listen to my content <laughs> from them, you know, emulate me, from them, you know, kind of incorporating my content into their content, just, you know, saying stuff I say on here, not just saying stuff I say on here, but, you know, all my nuances, like the way I say stuff on here, like they incorporated into their content some type of way, like a little, you know, wink, wink, I'm listening, so, you know, I just want to say to them that listen to me, I love y'all too. You know, I ain't on here to uh, clout chase or, you know, get um, validation. I'm here for the people. I'm here for our people. Because if it was a money thing, I would have been done stop a long time ago. Because it's not much money in this. Especially not on the audio platform. Like, all audio is, like, real, real, like, you can... Like, I got operational fee money. That's what I got. I, I don't got the sponsors and all that yet. I got operating costs money. So I'm able to come back and do another one every week. And I've been doing this since really the uh, pandemic. So, yeah. 
profit wise, I, I you know, a couple of little dollars here and there. A couple of little shump shump shumps. You know. Ain't nothing to uh, write home about, but you know, your son. You feel me? But anyway, just said all that to say, you know, I know I'm making an impact. I'm not just spinning my wheels like people are listening and people are following the example that I'm setting, the positive example I'm setting. That's what I'm here for. Because uh, we got to cut out the foolishness, y'all. And get back to loving each other. We don't have to like each other. That's just impossible for everybody just to like everybody. It's just like, I'm going to keep it real, there's just some people you just can't like. But, what we can't, gotta start doing is keeping a united front as a people because you don't care for someone because someone's not your cup of tea you shouldn't go running to Facebook or Instagram or wherever to spit venom on somebody you don't like if you don't like them just stay away from them and keep it pushing you don't gotta use your platform to air them out now, now, I know there's an exception to every rule. Like, if, you go on, if you're a celebrity and you go on the talk show and you're telling your truth, that's your business, you know? If you're not really talking bad about somebody per se, you're answering a question that, you know, a talk show asks you, what did, well, what did so-and-so say? And, you know, if you just tell them what you said when so-and-so asked, told you something, then, you know, you're giving your account, you know, that's not necessarily dragging somebody through the mud. However, the better option is be like, you know, just play it like, I don't know, you got to ask them, that's news to me, or, you know, hit them with the no comment. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm glad I started the way for Spotlight. That's what I'm here for. That's what we should all be here for. This gossip is super corny, and you know, we you got the whole rest of the world laughing at us. I ain't knocking anybody that you know who gets their hustle on uh, entertainment news. It's all good, but like we just we gotta get better at taking the gossip factor out. Of it. You know, you. you, you it can be entertaining and informative without us taking jabs at each other. That's all. You are now listening to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. So anyway, without no any further ado, I'm gonna just go on and let y'all in. Um, who is occupying the spot this week on this weekend edition of the Narrative Podcast? And today's spotlight goes to a brother by the name of Joel Leon. If I'm pronouncing the brother's name right, so jo- Joel Leon was born Joel L. Daniels, and he's from he is from the Bronx. He is a uh, wow. He's so much. Um, he's a poet. He's a writer. Uh, he's a storyteller, author. He does TED Talks, motivational speeches. Um, He's a a social media um, content creator. He's a social media influencer. Uh, And so many other hats. Uh, I guess, you know, longer story short, I guess the best um, 
way to describe the brother is he is a, a renaissance man. He's one of them people that can just do it all. And, you know, he's great at doing it all. And he does it all for our people. He's highly intelligent, very, very dynamic, very articulate. Uh, he uses his art form to uplift, you know, our people, everything, all of his books, all of his poetry, all of his, um, you know, stories. It's all about, you know, the liberation movement. It's all about our people, how we've been, you know, affected, you know, by um, oppression. And he's using his platform to basically herald the cause, like, you know, I feel like he's kind of something similar to me. Now, I know he's probably been doing it longer than I've been doing it, and at a higher level, most definitely, but um, I feel very, like, similar to him, because, you know, I write poetry, too, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, something like a storyteller in a good way. Because, you know, down south when they say you're telling the story, that means you're lying. But anyway. But, uh, yeah. So the brother is super uh, intelligent. Um, he uses his platform to reach the people. Um, I saw a whole lot of interviews with him on other people's podcasts and he's basically you know telling him he's using his gift we all have you know unique specific gifts we all have a stake in this liberation thing we all can change the landscape of what's going on with our people if we just properly use our gifts now some people might be you know, their gift uh, might be, somebody might be a painter, somebody might be an architect, somebody might be, a, a, you know, some something in the heavy machine industry, somebody might, you know, have the gift be on the tech side of it, and do computers, and, you know, and then we got brothers and sisters that's on the financial side of it, they know they really good at investments and, and, and side hustles and art and building wealth but like it, you know we all got we're all a little jigsaw piece you understand and we all gotta you know fit our piece in to complete the uh, bigger picture and the bigger picture is us you know having uh, abundant filled lives, um, peace, prosperity, you know, living in harmony and, you know, just being better versions of ourselves than we was like, you know, than yesterday and loving each other and elevating and networking and building and, you know, standing together in, you know, unity. And that's what his artwork reflects. So if you, you know, do your Googles and see his body of work in all the places, all the spaces that he speaks, and, you know, how he, you know, crafts his gift to give back to all of us, you know, to, like, distribute that energy with that with the passion that he has for you know what we're going through right now you know just basically like shining the light on it from the artistic perspective like he's doing it like really abstract 
It's just like, you know, the picture that they show on the media, like, oh my God, what is this? But then the way he sets it up, he says, oh, that's what that is. Oh, I never thought about it like that. I never saw it like that. You know, that's what people outside of our culture will say when they hear this brother speak and when they, you know, read or listen to his poetry or read one of his books or hear him speak in the interview, they get it. As opposed to the textbook. All they do is complain. They're so violent. They're so lazy. So, you know, that's how he's, you know, helping our people progress. Because we, you know, we are a nation of, you know, philosophers and artists and writers and, you know, of course, in the entertainment industry, you know, actors and actresses and, you know, like our very essence is art. You know, our just our 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 just you know unique genetic being is art. Everything we do is art. So you know that's you know what his artwork symbolizes. His artwork symbolizes our essence as a people. So that's his gift to the world to. Uh, give to the world and his contribution to the movement. And so we need like unique individuals like that to, you know, bring this thing full circle. So that is why our brother Joel Leon occupies a spot like this week here on the narrative podcast join me in the giving our brother a warm narrative podcast round of applause for his unique brand and his unique pr- approach to the liberation movements because you know as another one of my favorite poems poets pardon me said and I quote the tele the lit the movement will not be televised. Yeah, I misspoke. I, I said the movement, the revolution will not be televised. I can't believe I fumbled that one, but anyway, on to my next section here on The Narrative Podcast Weekend Edition. This section is called the Health and Wellness Section. And in this section, It's pretty self-explanatory. What I'm doing is I'm giving health and wellness tips. And the reason why I'm giving health and wellness tips is because I want my people, original people, to be healthy and well. Why do I want us to be healthy and well? Is because, you know, our people is very sick. Our people are very sick because we're, you know, we're under attack. We're being attacked physically mentally and spiritually so the tips that I give here in the um, health and wellness section of the narrative podcast will help our my people original people fortify themselves in the, all the areas that they're being attacked which is mentally spiritually and physically we're also being attacked um, financially as well but I don't give out um, financial advice because my philosophy I believe health is wealth you can have a billion dollars but if you got a, 
If you're not in good shape, you're going to spend all of it running back and forth to the hospital. And on meds, so, you know, health is well. Can't ever spin that up. Um, but um, anyway, yeah, so that's why I'm doing the health and wellness section here on the Narrative Podcast is to help my people be healthy and well. So a disclaimer I want to um, make before I get into, you know, the health and wellness um, tips this week here on the Narrative Podcast. Um, you know, my content is for anybody from any background to listen to and like and um, take notes and, you know, partake in. But, you know, all my content is directed at my people, original people. That's my target listening audience, my, um, my niche, my uh, demographic. So having said that, um, this area, you know, especially is focused on my people. And for one specific reason is because, you know, um, I don't know how other, uh, other way to say it, like we're not all the same. You know, I feel like this is the, the beat she drop for that Kendrick Lamar like, right now. They not like this. Like, we're not all the same. We've been, you know, brainwashed by religion to have this, like, kumbaya um, this kumbaya uh disposition meaning like we're all one and you know we're we're all one brother and you know if that was the truth I mean technically yeah but realistically no we're not we all we all have a different unique biological signature we all have different compositions we all are different um, culturally we're different mentally we have all have you know different unique physiolo- physiology uh, physiology um, you know, we think different things, we uh, need different things, our bodies need, you know, different dietetic things. Um, spiritually, if we're looking at religion, now how many different, you know, religions, like different denominations of Christianity, different approaches and perspectives of Islam, Judaism, Hindu, Hinduism, Buddhism, all the isms, they're all practiced differently. We're different in every way. So what will keep you healthy, what will keep your uh, culture healthy and thriving, will harm another culture. They can't live like the way you live. Like our people can't live the way your people live. Your people can't live the way our people live and expect to be, you know, in control of all their faculties. So for that, you know, we're all different and, we, you know, we all have different needs and I accommodate my people's needs so not to say I'm insensitive to your people's needs it's just that my people have suffered so much endured so much 
you know, we need some TLC. We need some special attention. And so that's what this section is designed to do to be, you know, therapy for my people, original people. You're more than welcome to listen and take notes and partake, silently partake, but, um, you know, I'm unapologetic about, you know, anything I mention in this section. Um, but anyway, so the types of tips that I give here in the health and wellness section of the narrative podcast, you know, like I said, things that affect our people mentally, physically, and spiritually, like they're putting things in the air, putting things in our food, putting things in the water. They're destroying us mentally with the media. They're destroying us mentally or uh, spiritually with religion and um, the entertainment industry. Yeah, there's some dark demonic forces around that. There are some evil, wicked entities thriving in that place. It's all around us. So I'm just giving tips on how to stay healthy, you know, in all scenarios. So on the physical side of it, the types of tips you would generally hear from me on the physical side is like some type of the health benefits of a a fruit, vegetable, herb, extract, elixir, root that you can ingest or apply topically to increase your physical health or some type of physical exercise you can do to keep you at keep your body operating at peak optimal peak efficiency um on the mental side As I said, we all have different, you know, mental triggers. So, like, I'm giving tips to our people to help maintain a a healthy mental mind state. Because it all, everything, your core of your being, everything, everything, it all starts in the mind especially within our religion, our uh, people's, um, you know, how we're put together. You know what I mean? So we got to be really in charge of our minds because we're having our minds being taken from us. We're having our minds being twisted in warts on a daily basis. So we need to be you know, in control of that. And I'm going to be telling you tips on how to, you know, stay in good mental health. So I'm going to be teaching, like, you know, vision, visions, like uh, visualization, pardon me, Uh, breathing, Meditation, emotional intelligence, clarity, focus, remote viewing, Just really trying to uh, go into like how to unlock your mind's full potential and how to control your thoughts and how to discipline your thoughts. You know, 
that's the type of tips I'll be giving on the mental side of it. And then on the spiritual side of it, so I'm going to be telling you all about, you know, the spiritual realm, how to rec recognize when spirits are around you, you know, how to um, build up a defense from, you know, how to ward off spiritual attacks, because it is spiritual warfare as well. You're under attack, you know, you're being attacked spiritually. How to develop your senses in the spirit realm. Well, I'll be, you know, telling you that. Those type of things. And then every once in a blue moon, you know, I'll be talking about something esoteric. You know, manifestation, you know, that type of stuff. Um, quantum law, divine law. Uh... Law of consequence, um, you know, and just anything that will make you ponder or think uh, critically. I just hit you with a little curveball every once in a blue moon in the uh, health and wellness section. But this week, we're going to be focusing on the physical side of it. And I'm going to be talking about, you know, the health benefits of a fruit that can get you right. And today I'll be talking about the health benefits of health benefits of the prickly pear. So, for starters, So the health benefits of the uh, prickly pear fruits, uh, for starters, it, it, you know, starting off with the name is, uh, you know, the scientific name is the uh, Ophunctus fecus indicus, you know, that's the scientific um, classification of it. Also referred to as the paddle, the paddle cactus in the uh, Nepal or tuna. Uh, it's rich in magnesium, rich in vitamin C, rich in potassium, rich in uh, calcium. Uh, rich in antioxidants so as we all know antioxidants is a fat burner uh, it's also anti-inflammatory and we also we also know from Dr. Savi that inflammation is the root cause of all diseases in the body once inflammation occurs in the body sicknesses it very soon to follow so you always want to incorporate anything with uh, anti-inflammatory properties so that'll help with swelling that'll help with you know the gout that'll help with the uh, body aches cramps anything anti-inflammatory that's what you always want to incorporate you know into your diet uh, helps to control the blood sugar, regulates the blood sugar, um, you know, the hyperglycemic uh, index. So, you know, it'll keep, it'll prevent your uh, um, sugar levels from spiking, you know, when you eat, if you're a chronic eater, if you, like, eat more than one time a day, this will help, you know, keep you at normal this is also good for your uh, gut health because um, it's rich in fiber so it'll help you feel full and then also keep you regular you know get a grease the gears to get the goods gone if you know what I'm saying bloop 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 poop poop 
to help you with your poot poot. Poot poot. Your poot poot. You have a good poot poot if you eat that fruit fruit. Good for your cardi cardiovascular system. It um, you know, help you know circulate the blood. It get deliver blood flow and everywhere you need the blood flowing, like your legs, your arms. Um, if you're a man, you know your male organ, your brain, also for like everybody. But you know, I'm just talking about our men in the men. Uh, for women, it helps with those uh, fibroids. Um, it also uh, helps uh, prevent cancer, and it's also good. It promotes healthy brain functions. Um, it says it has neuro. Uh, Neuroprotective effects. Basically, it uh, shield your uh, brain from RMI. Cause there's like a whole lot of uh, radiation, and uh, you know, basically uh, distortions and all that. Keep you for pre uh, prevent you from like developing brain fog, so you won't be forgetting things and you know acting like you got symptoms of dementia and you know what I mean. Can't recall long or term, lo uh, long term or short term memory or uh, have cognitive thoughts. So that'll help for that. Essentially, like it's basically like a um, a superfood. It's very hydrating as well as all, you know, cactuses are. Um, you know, you can cook it, of course. Um, definitely in Spanish uh, culture, they cook cactus. They call them napales. Now, this is the fruit of the cactus, so it is very, very sweet. It has a lot of seeds. Uh, I'm getting like when I when I eat them, it's a, it to me maybe it's just my taste, but it tastes kind of like a plum, it look like kind of like tart, like the texture wise, like a plum and um, it's kind of like a plum and a pear mixed. It's kind of like you know, it's kind of tarty. If tarty is a word, I mean not tarty like it's late, but tart like. And then like sweet at the same time. So it's like the sweetness hit, hits you first and then the tartness kicks in. But uh, it's very refreshing. Kind of um, something similar, you know. Hydrates your cells, kind of something similar to watermelon does. Um, highly sustainable fruit. Um, good in heat, of course, and it's best for combating the heat, regulating your uh, body temperature heat. If you live like somewhere really hot, so to have you feeling cool, um, you can eat it straight up raw. You can uh, make smoothies. You can freeze it. And make you know, like a slushy type deal. It's all kind of ways you can enjoy it. You just have to be creative and uh, find a way that works for you. Me, myself, I just like eating them straight up raw. Very good. Um, like two or three, like two or three of them, that get you right for the whole day. Your energy levels will go through the roof. You know, it definitely, uh, uh, there's no study showing that it helps with mood, but I don't know too many people 
they get angry after eating some uh, prickly pear. Like, you know, to me, it's like, you know, in our culture, when you get the kick in your feet, when you taste something good, when I eat pr prickly pear, like, you know, has me kicking my feet. So, yeah, prickly pear is all good. Incorporate it into your diet. Um, research it and see if it's right for you. We're all different, but um, it'll definitely get you on the uh, path to uh, being more physically fit, rich in uh, H3O2, all fruits are, but prickly pear is definitely like a superfood and um, very cheap, very affordable and pretty much available all year round and highly sustainable um, it's not really nothing too much bad about it if, if you know it boils down to a preference your taste buds like what do you like what's good to you but um I always like count balance that out if like if you drink alcohol you can eat fruit if you smoke weed you can eat fruit if you do anything uh, harder than marijuana or pop pills you can like eat you some fruit like so don't let the taste run you away get them health benefits and um, you know live a, a better life so that's my health and wellness tip of the day. Research peak, uh, prickly pear on your own. Experiment with it. Incorporate it in your diet. And see if you notice the change. And on to my next section of the narrative podcast section. Or the narrative podcast weekday edition. I'm getting a little tired, y'all. Um, this section is basically my uh, current event section. I call this section my speaking points. Um, and basically, I'm addressing anything going on in the news, um, whether it's globally, nationally or just something going on within our community and um, the purpose of me doing that is basically just um, letting you know you know you're not imagining it um, yeah they're trying to play us out for our people and then also basically to control the narrative Cause like I said before earlier, like if history hasn't taught us anything, it's taught us this. If you don't tell your own story, your story will be told for you. Because the media is always trying to play us out. So, you know, the purpose of me doing this section is just breaking down whatever's happening in the world, in the news from our perspective. Um, now, there are some rare occasions where I just don't have anything to talk about or like if um, I don't feel is anything poignant or relevant in the uh you know news to speak about i just um in that instance i just make an observation you know like a psa type of deal things i notice about our people we should probably work on i i might do that but um today i'm gonna talk about a little bit about you know, the thing that shut us down and changed our lives forever. The thing you really still can't say on the internet. So I'm going to say C-19. Not that I'm modernized anyway, but, you know, C-19. Because maybe somebody who listen to my podcast is. So I don't want them getting no whatever penalties for sharing my content on their platform but uh, C-19 
and I'm kind of going somewhere with this now my my uh my logic behind it some people might accuse me of being a conspiracy theorist but you know when you connect the dots it makes kind of sense so C-19 people just really out here acting like you know it it unlet it just like it just gone now check this out so oh boy dirty joe jim crow joe he drops out of the election because he contracts C-19 and then Madam Vice President steps up to run in the upcoming elections for the Democratic Party but the plot thickens After he did that, C-19 starts spiking, more outbreaks start spiking all over America. Hmm. Isn't that suspicious? Then just recently, our brother, Noah Lyles, he was running in a race, came third place, passed out after he hit the finish line because he had C-19. Where am I going with this? Noah Lyles has many, many, many um, mental health um, problems. No allows is an advocate for mental health. Just recently, our sister, Sonia Massey, was gunned down in front of our faces. She didn't have it though. She didn't have the C-19. But she did have severe mental health issues. Uh-oh. This is where it gets deep. No allows is an advocate for mental health. Now, where is the biggest platform in the world to advocate for causes? The Olympics. Now, he was not diagnosed before he ran the race. Where'd he get it from? Where did he get it from? Where did he contract it from? He didn't have it before he went over to Paris. Oh, they don't just be injecting people with it? They don't just be dispersing it in the air? Because when it first came out, what was the first thing they said? They said we couldn't get it. And then a week later, thousands of us start dying from it. And now he got it. An advocate for mental health. Huh? Huh? 
Why ain't none of the women get it? Because they're not threatened by the women. They're threatened by men. They don't want men speaking up and opening our eyes for open opening our eyes for uh, to something right in front of us. They scared of that. I'm tripping. Okay, let's go back in time. Our brother, who is now an advocate. For the jab, contracted it, fell out on stage. D.L. Hughley went back, both feet back, fell out on stage. And now he's advocating for the jab. What makes me think that they, get, that they uh, gave it to him, his platform, where he's actively always speaking out on our social issues and so before he contracted it he was speaking out against it then he goes out does his set falls back both feet back six like two or three months later He's advocating for the jab. Another strong uh, mind-willed person in our fam or in our uh, community that contracted it. It speaks out on social issues. His, uh, you know, somebody out, 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 out of the same class of comedic stylings as him, outspoken. Always speaking his mind whether you like it or not. Also, ended up catching it. He caught it so bad it almost took his life. Faison Love. Huh? Think they won't inject it in you? Think they won't introduce it into the air? to get their message across or to silence you. So said all that to say, quit acting like it's a joke. You don't gotta go outside with your uh you know face mask on and live in fear. But let, like I've been saying it. Been saying it and saying it. Stop acting like it's a joke. Stop acting like history can't repeat itself. Our commander in chief dropped out of the race because he had C-19. He probably had it the whole time that he had been running. Because he's sitting up on camera having senior citizen moments, then fail, missing the podium, having shortness of breath, exhibiting and displaying all the symptoms of it. And now it's spreading all over in America again. And what happened the last time during the election? Like right after uh, election time was coming up, we went into a full shutdown. But wait, more stuff. Before the election, we start having all these weird things going on in our community. We had Amar Arbery. There was three months before it. Then we had um, our brother, George Floyd. Then we had Breonna Taylor. That's three. It comes in threes, right, for our, 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 all our spiritual people. Angel numbers, it comes in threes, don't it? Then we start having all these weird, weird things in nature happening, stuff happening with the animals. Then all these weird, you know, fires and floods, insects, huh? 
So what we done had this year in 24, we done had earthquakes where there was never no, no earth, earthquakes before. We've seen mutations in nature, in the animals. They're doing something every day with our food. Something new every day, every time you turn on the TV. It's something in the meat. It's something in the produce. And it's only in our country. So said all that to say, stop st like staying stuck on stooping. Keep your eyes open. Start stocking up food. Start disciplining your body because we are not like we're just at the eye of the storm. We're just at like it's some bull bull mess coming. It's some bull mess coming. They on that man. So I don't know, y'all might call me a conspiracy theorist. I call it being observant. Noticing trends. Knowing our government. Knowing other people's government. So that's all I'm saying. Like, C-19 is spiking all over the nation right now as we speak we've already had been have then had natural disasters we're not even in 25 yet we've had over four natural disasters we've had over a dozen uh mutations and um things happening with the animals Just like last time, before we went into the uh, lockdown, all that stuff was happening, and oh yeah, we've had unalivings in our community from the police and civilians. So final word, not final word for my speaking point of the day. Wait for it. Wait for it. That's my final word. I'm gonna just put it out there. You can do what you want to with it, but like, yo, think about it. It makes sense when you think about it. Well, that's like. Um, got one more section in this episode of the narrative podcast is officially a wrap and my final section of the narrative podcast section or the narrative podcast is wise word of the day the wise word of the day is just a gem, a pearl of wisdom, something to reflect upon, to think critically about. Um, something that will resonate with you. And uh, it's had a lot of evolutions, but I'm sticking with wise word of the day. When I first started doing it, it was... Uh, Final thought, I mean, a final word, so I'm just going with wise word of the day. It just got a better ring to it, and I'm sticking with it. So, wise word of the day is progress. Um, progress is really kind of funny. It's because, like, it's literally what you make of it. 
anything we want to, anything we do, we want to progress. That's just our incendiary nature as beings. We're here to get better. No matter what walk of life you you uh, come from, no matter what background you come from, we're all here for something. We're not just here to just to be here. We all got gifts. We all got talents. We got all have innate abilities within us. We all have a path, and when we get up, we all wake up with conviction. Now, some of us are a little bit more dedicated than most, more driven than most, and they yield more results than most. They progress. Well, you hold on. Here's the mic drop. You're progressing too. You progress in everything you do as well. But you can't see your natural progression because you're too worried about somebody else's. You're trying to measure your progress off of somebody else's life instead of just focusing on your path. Uh, it's like when you're working out and you just, you know, you're going every day. And it's like when you stand in the mirror, you can't see any progress. But when you leave the house, you know, people, the uh, little muscle groups or the inches, if you're trying to lose the weight, you're not seeing the inches fall off you. Or if you're trying to pump the, uh, you've been pumping weights, you're trying to get bulk, trying to get buff, you're trying to get cut, and you're not seeing it. But guess what? Every time you leave the house, somebody else sees it. Say, hey, something's different about you. Hey, are you working out? Something's different. Something's different. Like every time you see somebody else, they're telling you, they're giving you signs that you're progressing but when you're looking at yourself you, you, you don't see the progress you see and that's how it be sometimes like you be we be sitting out here just winning like winning but we're not satisfied because we can't we want the receipts we want the game over we want the uh, uh, the band to come out on the field for us when we finish our lap. Trying to use some um, Olympic uh, analogies right now. We want to we want to uh, sit out there and stand on the uh, podium and get our gold medal all the time. But it ain't like that all the time. It ain't like that. We showed up. We competed. You ain't going to get that gold medal all the time. You ain't going to get that silver medal all the time. You ain't going to get that bronze medal all the time. But what you are going to get all the time without fail is progress. Progress. You're better than you was when you started it. And that's really all that matters. Validation don't matter. You don't need somebody to tell you you're doing a good job. You don't got, need somebody to tell you keep it up. The proof's in the pudding. The proof's in the pudding. Only you determine your progress. If I'm down bad, you will never know. Is I progress. You know, like people, content creators, I know they go through it the most because they're always checking all their little medias, they're always checking their stats and, well, dang, this is saying I'm not reaching nobody, uh, the algorithm, I ain't getting no clicks and I ain't went viral yet, they're looking for that viral moment, they want to go viral, they want to go viral, they want to go viral. <coughs> 
they don't think they're doing nothing. They think they're just spinning their wheels. But then they go check their email. And it's flooded with people that, that subscribe to their content. Thank you. It, and they're going through, they're sifting, they're reading the comments. Positive and negative, you know. Somebody's watching you. You're making a difference. You're making progress. You're impacting somebody's life. You're progressing. So I think the biggest thing that we get wrong with progress, we want to get, we get finishing and progressing, like, we get it intertangled. Just because you finish something doesn't mean you progress. Sometimes when you finish something, it just means you're done with that phase of it. It's like, okay, you went to school, you graduated. You're done. For now, you can go back if you want to, but you made progress while you was there. Even if you flunked out. <laughs> you made progress even if you flunked out, you made progress. Assuming, like, at least you went and got your uh, GED. And if you got your GED, you made progress, right? We all progress. We all progress in all areas of life. It's just we can't see it because we so busy looking for textbook signs that we're progressing. We want to see the results. And you can't see your own results all the time. Sometimes it's just it comes in different ways. It might come in money, it might come in compliments, it might come in just, you know, the journey, the path. Resources just might, you know, a whole new world just might start opening up around you. From doing your everyday routine, you progressed. You're working a nine to five job. Well, on the first, like, they give you a week. You only had one day of training. You four months in, now you train the other people. You progressed. You know, even one further up. You started a job, you quit your job, you started your own business, you made progress. We all progress in different le levels. Even when you fail, you're progressing because you're learning from your mistake. Like, oh, I'd never do that again. Or if that happens to me, now I know what to do. You know, we all change. You're like, old me, new me. Who's the same them that they was five years ago? Who's the same them that... The like from just yesterday we all progress animal kingdom they progress it's called evolution so wise word of the day is progress Don't chart your progress, be your progress. Let that marinate. Alright, that's it and that's all. This episode of the Narrative Podcast is officially a wrap. Download this episode and all previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast wherever you get your podcast information from. Join me next weekend for another full edition of the Narrative Podcast. Join me all this week for random uploads of week the weekday episodes of the narrative podcast to um, stay up to date with the most recent episode of the narrative podcast follow me on youtube and subscribe to my youtube channel hit the notification button notification off and you'll be notified every time a new episode of the Narrative Podcast drops from YouTube 
And then another way you can stay up to date with the most recent episodes of the Narrative Podcast is to follow me on X. I'm Ozzy Allen on both mediums. I'm um, I stay good at Ozzy Allen actually on X, but on um, YouTube is Ozzy Allen. And just go to my videos. That's my viewer channel. You can just go to my view videos and you'll see every single last episode of the narrative podcast uploaded so you'll always be up to date with the newest episode of the narrative podcast wherever you get your podcast information from um, and to support the podcast you want to download click that little download button and the best way to do that is um, you know click on the link on my X account and it'll take you right to my podcast and you will see all the little options you'll see the downward you know arrow to download it to download the episode that's the most effective way then you can also leave me a comment they got a, a little comment box underneath the episode and you can click on that and leave me a comment and then also the little uh, heart shaped like button you can click on that and then also the little three buttons and then the little like you know share you know you got a smart device so. and then you can share it uh, whatever um, platform you want to share it to that'll help me as well but uh, whatever you do download the episode Download this episode and all previously recorded episodes of the Nerd Podcast. Um, like I said, full episode next weekend. Um, random episodes during the weekday. X and um, YouTube is the best way to stay um, up to date with the most recent episodes of the Nerd Podcast. Follow me on any of those two mediums. <clears throat> Next order of business, I want to promote my book of poetry that I wrote. It's titled The Black Card, and it's a 30-page book of poetry um, chronicling our um, experiences as a people, both positive and negative. Everything we go through as a people is depicted in those po in the in the poems in that book. Um, so yeah to make a good coffee table read and make a good gift um, you know if you're an original man or original woman you can automatically identify and resonate with the poems featured in that uh, book if you're not an original man or original woman you're outside of our culture if you're uh, you know Kamala like uh, you could definitely appreciate the narrative podcast, um, or excuse me, pardon me, the, um, the black card. If you consider yourself open-minded and progressive and want to learn about uh, people from different back backgrounds, you can definitely, you know, purchase the uh, black card and, um, you know, partake in our culture. I mean, you partake in it anyway if you listen to hip-hop or jazz or or um country music or 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 you know r and b or any music form you're partaking in our culture you're partaking in the dances you're partaking in the food and everything you do so why not partake in partake in the, uh some literature partake in the black card um At this time, it's only available on one medium, and that's Poetizer.com. Poetizer.com has a, a virtual online bookstore. So go visit Poetizer.com. Go inside their uh, virtual online bookstore and look for the title of my book. Type it in the thing, the browser, the black card. Once you get to that site, their um, bookstore. 
And it's written by me, Halsey Allen, and purchase that. And if you're unfamiliar with uh, Poetizer, um, it's a community for novice writers to, um, you know, hone their skills to become professional writers. And so what they, you know, how they do that is they have a, a feature that will allow you know, them to, you know, share their work and turn it into a um, book for a monetary fee, of course. And, um, you know, they can go for it there. You know, they help it, help them, uh, you know, create a book. They got services that will, you know, market the book for you and pretty much everything um, Amazon and Kindle does, but much cheaper, much, much, much cheaper, illustration, all that, um, so like I said, it's a, a community for novice writers, um, all uh, writing genres, um, short stories, novels, um, even essay writing is welcome, um, journal writing, just any type of writing you like to do, but it's primarily a uh, specifically targeted for poets. It's in the name Poetizer. So that's what that community is about. Um, go to their virtual online bookstore and purchase my book The Black Card. Purchase The Black Card today or get your black card revoked. And my last thing I want to plug before I'm out of here is my personal poetry blog on blogger.com Title Hawes's Poetry Corner at www.mrhawesesblogs.com. Um, and what that is, is it's a collection of all my poetry that I write. Um, you know, I've been writing it for a, a really long time. I'm just like, you know, I like to write poetry. I like to um, perform it, spoken word artists, all that, all that good stuff. I can do all that. Um, but uh, it's just a, a little creative um, platform to uh, express myself on. Um, the unique thing about fat poetry is like um, it touches on like a wider range of topics and subject matter. Another um, cool thing about it is it's just like all of it was spontaneously written in the moment. Like, I didn't contemplate on the title, I didn't contemplate on the subject matter, but the uh, poems are so um, intentional and specific and detailed, you would get the impression that, like, I, like, drafted it or something before I posted it, but that's not what happened. Like, I swear, like, everything was just spontaneously in the moment, but, you know, all the poetry on that blog is diverse and, um, wide range of topics and you know if you you know visit that site and read one of those poems you're guaranteed to find a poem that you can resonate with and um, you know identify with you can like literally like lose yourself in one of my poems now I do have a dozen or so poems specifically for our people but generally like anybody can read from any background can read one of my poems and like you know find themselves in it and just like immerse themselves in the creativity of the way the peace flows so yeah that's why you should go check out you know my poetry on Hawes's Poetry Corner blog and to get there you know, it's on blogger.com at www.mrhawsesblogs.com. And the way you support the, uh, uh, my poetry blog is to, you know, when you uh, visit the site, share the link to Hawses Poetry Corner, which is www.mrhawsesblogs.com, or share a poem featured on Hawses Poetry Corner across all platforms. So, you know, when you get there, Click that little heart-shaped like button. 
They have a little box where you can uh, type a comment, type me a comment on one of my pieces or, or, or on all my pieces, you know, just like a comment is equivalent to like signing the guest book. Um, let me know you was there, give me some feedback, what you like, what you didn't like about it. Or, you know, if you got some resources or whatever. I want to say, hey, what's up? Whatever, whatever. But uh, whatever you do, you know, share, you know, Hawes' Poetry Corner or uh, the link to Hawes' Poetry Corner or a poem featured on Hawes' Poetry Corner across all platforms. Click the heart-shaped like button. You know, just show my uh, poetry folks some love like they're showing the narrative podcast some love. <clears throat> Thank you for showing me love. Love y'all too. I'm sending you light, love, and healing energy over everything you got going on over your life. We're going to get through this. Uh, we're going to change this narrative together. I'm Halsey Allen, and I'm changing the narrative one episode at a time. And I want you to help me change the narrative by becoming a narrator. While I'm changing the narrative on my end one episode at a time as a narrator, you can help me change the narrative on your end one social media post at a time. Until next time, Ozzy Allen, Narrative Podcast, signing off, and it's like that.